In engineering, Fermi estimation is an estimation problem designed to teach approximation. Funny thing is, these type of estimates and these type of questions also come up in interviews. In today's video, I'm going to share five steps to answering a Fermi estimation question. That's today's topic. Welcome to Ask the Resume Lady, Engineering Edition, your channel for career advice on resumes, interviews, negotiations, and more. Hi, I'm Diane Karsotowski. I'm an engineering professional, and I enjoy helping people to grow in their career by sharing my advice with them. If you want to be updated on the latest and greatest videos, please subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon so that you get notified each time that I post a new video. All right, let's get to today's topic. In today's video, I want to talk about Fermi estimation. Do you guys remember back in the day, professors always wanted you to show your work? I know whenever I think about that, I have flashbacks to statics and dynamics. They did that because they wanted to see your way of thinking. They could see how you process things. Well, this also happens in interviews. When an interviewer asks you what seems to be a crazy question like, how many white cars are in the US in 2019? You may think, I don't know. But the good thing is, is you don't have to know the answer, the numeric answer. But what you do need to know is how to estimate. And when you do that estimation, explain to the interviewer your process. Okay. So the interviewer, again, they're not so worried about how accurate your number is. They're more interested in to see how you work through the problem. All right. So don't freak out when you get this type of question, just take it step by step. So here are the five steps I suggest you take. First, number one, scope the problem. You, what you can do is you can even ask clarifying questions. So if we use the, the white car uh, situation I talked about a little while ago, ask some questions about that. Sometimes your interviewer might uh, go ahead and say, you know what, go ahead and make the assumptions. If that's the case, that's fine. You just take it and you run with it, okay? Number two, break down the problem. Start to think of the elements that make up that, that question. Some of the things could be, um, for this one, what's the U.S. population? How many people are in a household? How many households in the U.S.? Uh, how many different colors of cars? These are some of the things that you could start to think of as your elements. So break it down. What are the, the things that build into it? Number three, estimate. Now, the numbers aren't what's important. It's more of your process. So be prepared with some, some numbers and work your way through your estimate. Start breaking it down. All right. Number four, your answer. Now, this is your chance to go ahead and explain to them what you did and what numbers you chose and why. Okay. So basically you're summarizing your approach. So as an, here's an example. There are approximately 300 million people in the U S I'm going to assume that there are three people per household. So then that leads to about a hundred million households. Okay. I'm also going to assume 70% of households have cars. Okay. Cause I, I assume 70% because some people, uh, commute to work via public transportation. So I'm going with 70%. Um, and I'm also going to say there's an average of 1.5 cars per household in that group of people that of the households that have cars. So then when we do the calculations, that shows that I've got 105 million cars in the U S now I'm going to assume that 25% of all cars are white. Uh, I'm assuming that because white's a very popular color. I, I think there's probably about six popular white, black, red, blue, yellow, and green. And I think white's the most popular. So I'm going to give it a 25% ranking. So then when I take that and I calculate it, it looks to be 26.3 million white cars in the United States. See how simple that was? Not too bad, huh? So it's sometimes it's just breaking it down. So then the fifth step, tell the, tell the interviewer why you think you're wrong. This is your chance to say, now, if I had more time, I think I would have asked um, or did uh, ask some more questions or done some more research 
something like when we asked how many white vehicles, I assumed uh, for, the, for the general public, maybe there were also commercial vehicles involved. So then my numbers are gonna be off. Whatever it is, that's what number five is. Just explain that there's many other factors that you didn't consider. So those are the five steps. Scope out the problem, break it down into its elements, do an estimation, and then come up with your answer and explain why you might be wrong. Those are the five steps. Here's an extra tip. So when you are preparing for your interview, memorize some basic numbers in preparation. Some of the numbers you could do, like what's the world population, uh, how many U.S. households, how much U.S. population, uh, what is the area of the con uh, con continental U.S., uh, life, expense, life expectancy in the U.S., or maybe even the median U.S. household income. These are just a few things that you could research ahead of time, kind of have in the back of your mind, so when, when uh, questions come up, you have something to draw from as just at least a basis. See, answering Fermi estimation questions aren't that bad. And with a little of preparation, it might be your favorite part of the interview. So good luck. I know you're going to do great. I hope you found value in today's video. If you did, please drop me a note in the comments section below. And if you need additional information, please check out these videos here. And if you're new to the channel, welcome and please subscribe here. All right, as I always leave you, think confident, act confident, be confident.